What's up everyone, it's your boy Nick and welcome back to a whole nother episode. So today I'm going to be showing you how I built this very desk. So if you want to see how I did it, follow along on this episode. And as always, roll that intro. Yeah. Okay, so today is going to be a sick day for many reasons, but mostly because I am building something for myself. And I don't usually get to build stuff for myself because it's either always for a client or something for the house and when we move we don't get to take with me. So I'm pretty excited about that. So by now you would have either seen the title, the thumbnail or possibly read the description. Does, does anyone really do that nowadays? I don't know, but you know that I'm building myself a desk. And the reason why that's such a good thing is because my current desk's situation isn't quite working for me right now. Hey, you are a cereal table. Okay, okay. So for the piece of wood sitting on top of the desk is a slab of maple that I've been keeping for probably about two years now. And I've kept it aside for the right project and I feel like this is it. I've been storing it down in my crawl space, so why don't we go down, go and get it, bring it up, and then just basically let's have a look at it. So, let's get going. Man, I love coming down there because there's always something fun happening. Let's go check it out. So this is it, this is a maple, uh, maple slab. Um, it's been milled here from Vancouver Island and um, dried here from a local kiln here. And I know it looks like garbage right now, but trust me, I have a real eye for like nice pieces of wood. So just bear with me until we clean it up and then you'll see for yourself. So let's set up the router sled, get it flat, and then um, we'll talk about the next stage. So now that the slab has gone through the router sled and we've got it nice and flat and we brought it down in the thickness because it's probably pretty heavy right now, especially for that sit stand base. I don't want to, I want to get it as light, well, I want to try and make it as light as possible. So next we're going to go and get an old chisel and then remove all this loose bark from the holes and then from the live edge and anywhere else that might have bark so that we can clean it up for the finish. Ugh, what am I doing? And then we're gonna remove all the router marks by sanding it with an 80 grit. Okay, so now that I've sanded the router marks off and removed all the loose bark, there's still a bit more cleanup to do before we measure up and cut it to size and do the final sand ready for finish. And to do so, we're gonna use this little attachment. It's basically, it's just a wire brush attachment that goes in your drill. And it's, uh, it's pretty good for cleaning up loose bark and just kind of cleaning up kind of like awkward little areas so you get them in a few different sizes like this one and this one but i really prefer this size i think it's the it gets in all those little nooks and crannies a lot easier um so yeah you put it in your drill basically put your drill on the highest setting that it has and then just have at it Now 
Next, I would uh, usually round off the top edge and the underside edge, but because I'm having glass and the glass is gonna sit on top and um, extend past, I'm never gonna really have to, I'm never gonna touch that edge or catch myself on that top edge, so I don't really have to do much to it. But I do have to really sand and round off the underside edge because that's where my leg and my hands are gonna be rubbing against the most. So we're gonna flip it over and start sanding the underside of the table. So to really smooth off the underside edge of this desk, I'm gonna be using a drum sander attachment for my drill. And all these little pieces that I'm using here in this video, I will link down below in case you ever wanna use them on your projects, because they come in pretty handy. Once that sharp edge has been smoothed over, I'm gonna clean it up with a rough sandpaper on a sanding block. That way it's nice and smooth and no one's gonna accidentally injure themselves. So if I was gonna build this desk for a client, I would most likely sand all these burly points down, but because this desk is for me, I really like these. These are like my most favorite parts of the live edge. So I'm gonna keep them in. I'm definitely gonna cut this down because I do feel like it's gonna be a bit of a pants ripper. God damn it. With that said, in a later video, I am building a cabinet to sit at this section of the desk, so it's gonna block my access to this point anyway. And obviously the glass sits past it, so I don't really get anywhere near it. I'm just trying to reduce the amount of comments that I'm gonna get. Oh, are you gonna tear yourself? Are you gonna cut yourself on this? I'm not, I'm not gonna be anywhere near it. Plus, it's my desk, I'm gonna do what I want. So now that slab's been cleaned up, there's no sharp edges, no sharp points, it's now time to go inside and measure up and see how long I wanna make this desk. So this little area, cubby, whatever this is here, uh, is where I'm gonna be putting the desk and it sits perfectly in between my kitchen and my living area, which is cool. So I can be working away and be watching Wolf and just kind of be in between everything, which is where I wanna be. It's also great because it's a nice long area. So it sits at around 79 inches. So just over six and a half foot. So I'm gonna utilize that whole space and make a desk as big as I possibly can to fit in this area. So the opening is 79 inches wide and about 25 and a half inches deep. So that's the depth and the width that I'm gonna cut my glass. So now that we determine the size of the desk, I can cut the desk to the length that I want and the depth is determined by the actual piece of glass which I've just ordered. And that takes about two to three weeks to arrive because it's gotta be tempered and I got some holes marked and cut in it as well. So it takes a bit of time to get here. So in the meantime, we can get it cut to size using the track saw and then we can give it a finished sand all the way up to 320 grit, ready to apply the finish. So now the slab is cleaned up and it's nice and smooth. I'm not gonna fill any of the knot holes or the cracks or like this thing here, where obviously someone went at it at a chainsaw when they took it out. I feel like what was here before was like a big burl and they cut that off. It's all kind of like the character of the wood and I'm gonna try and keep it natural um, and as, as raw as I can. Um, because I feel like that, plus the glass, is gonna make it look sick. So um, before I apply the finish, I actually wanna head inside and go check out the adjustable base. So let's go do that. Yeah. So for the base of my desk, I teamed up with my good friends at FlexiSpot. Oh wait. Huh? So FlexiSpot were calling it the Semular EQ3 Dual Motor Sit Stand, which is adjustable height desk frame which is also rated for 275 pounds. Oh, oh. So the frame itself can go from 23.6 inches all the way up to 49.2 inches. And can also be adjusted in width from 48 inches all the way up to 80 inches wide, which is pretty impressive. So, I knew when I picked out this slab that I eventually would have to align the base to go in and around these holes. And I was kind of thinking it'd be cool to put some LEDs just underneath so you can physically see through the holes. So it'd be kind of a shame to see the base through that because, I don't know, I think it'd look cooler if you couldn't see the base through the holes. 
So that basically means the top of the desk determines the position of the legs. And this is kind of the best case scenario where the legs and the motors aren't physically visible through the holes, but it does mean that they're not even from each end. And it's only a couple inches, so I don't think anyone would really notice unless you pointed it out. But I wanted to bring it up just in case people were thinking that. And that's my reason why it's slightly off. Plus, it's my desk, so I don't care. To attach the top to the actual base, I like to use these things called threaded inserts. And these are great because you can unscrew and screw these as many times as you like without jeopardizing the thread. See, with standard wood screws, you've got two, maybe three attempts before you strip the thread, and then you just gotta get a hole and it's a bit of a mess. With these, you can take your top off your base as many times as you want, and they'll always go back in without any issues. And they're pretty easy to work. You basically mark the underside of the top through the holes on the base, drill those holes out, and then insert these threaded inserts. And then you're good to go. Now that the top has been sanded and the holes have been drilled for the base, it's now time for my favorite part, the finish. Yeah. So I applied two coats of Osmo oil, allowing eight hours to dry in between. And then I let it sit for about two to three days so it's cured enough for me to work on. In the midst of all that, my freaking glass arrived. When I ordered the glass, I got them to drill four holes in a specific location. So that way I can attach the glass to the wood top without it tipping off and sliding and just injuring someone. And the hardware that I'm using is basically this. It comes with a countersunk washer and a screw and the screw goes into a threaded insert the same way that we're attaching the top to the base so that means the hole that they have to drill has to be a countersunk hole which cost me a little bit more and that's they did that that's great but they drilled them in the wrong freaking place which is extremely frustrating because i spent the time to mark out the holes in the specific location so that i didn't have this problem and if i want to send it off and get another piece cut and delivered it's going to take another seven and a half weeks which I can't wait for right now. So they've given it to me at a pretty good price and I'm just gonna, I'm basically I'm just gonna have to deal with it. I'm gonna have to work around it and make it work, which I can, it's just, it's not perfect and I aim for perfection and it's driving me crazy, but it's okay. So the reason why I chose this hardware is because it's nice and flush, it looks fairly decent and it attaches to a threaded insert so it's fairly easy to install once the hole is drilled in the glass. And I'll link it down below so if you at home wanted to try this, you know where to find the hardware. To attach to the glass hardware, it's fairly simple really. I just found a drill bit the same size of the inside of the washer. And then line the glass up with the top and then using the washers as a guide, I drilled all four holes for the threaded inserts. I slid the glass off inserted the threaded inserts into the drilled holes in the top of the slab, which was very nerve wracking for me. Cleaned up, slid the glass back into place and then inserted the hardware. So all that's really left is to bring this inside and attach it to the base and then figure out the cable management. So as the base is adjustable and electric, it comes with a bunch of wires. So what I've done is I've attached them to the underside of the top, tucking them away nice and neatly so that you don't see the wires and the cables when the base is at its standard height. I also went around and ran some LEDs around the perimeter of the holes just to make it even more badass. So the only thing left is to attach the controls which makes it go up and down. So usually you would attach it at the end or the front of the desk but I obviously can't do that here because it's glass so I'm just going to stick it here. And it simply just screws on so I can change it and move it around if I want to in the future. And there you have it, a fully functional working desk and I'm beyond stoked how this whole thing has come together. From the adjustable height sit stand base, from the maple slab to the glass and the LEDs, I am super happy. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and possibly hit subscribe. If you want to go see some of my other videos, go check out some of the videos that are going to be floating around here in just a second. Go follow me on Instagram and Facebook, all the links are down below. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Yeah.